Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Terra Tech. Oh, you are going to be in for a treat today. <laughs> I may be overselling it a little bit, but I actually have some really cool ideas for how we can set up and expand our base. And I am extremely excited for this, but I realise first things first, we need a lot more money. We're down to 5,000. We brought that massive tech over there, which I've learned is not good for defending the base. You want something nippy to go around here when there's an invader. And I'm also slightly anticipating that we're going to have an invader right as we do this because we haven't had one in a while. Here's a little sneak peek of something that we might be doing. <laughs> I'll explain a bit more about that later on. And uh, yeah, we're going to start off by dropping off all of these materials. And I've gone out um, harvesting lots of different things. If you have a look here, no trees whatsoever. Try to focus on getting plumbite. We've also got some carbite, which is going to be a little bit of a problem. Now, in the future, what we do here will be aided by item filters when we unlock them. But the idea is that we're going to refine all of these materials. And then, if we switch the view by clicking on this thing over here, then we're going to run them down this line, refine them, run them down another line. And we've got foundries here. So I'm hoping that the plumbite is going to go in and uh, it's going to get formed into ingots, which gets sold over here. Now this system's eventually going to back up. We can't really avoid that happening. At the moment it kind of depends on how much plumbite is coming through and you can see that actually not a lot, although we've got a lot of it stored up here. So I'm going to have to think about um, how we do this. Maybe we make a loop here. We have it sort of loop back round on itself and maybe that would work. Um, but it's going to be an interesting thing for sure. So here comes our first bit of plumbite and it goes into there. So instead of selling these individually, which cost you know, less than what we're going to get for turning it into an ingot. Um, yeah, this is this is going to make us some real money right here. And let's see, how much are you going to sell for? We did this, oh my god, 760. That is fantastic. And already we've got two of them on the go. And now we're officially backed up. Yeah, this is where we could really do some item filters. So I'm going to have to manually manage this, which is fine. I don't mind sitting around doing that. It's going to be fun. going to be fun to see how much money we can earn. So we started off with, what, 5,800? I'm going to get all of this stuff processed and we're going to see how much money we make. Okay, things are moving along now, but I totally forgot the yellow ones as well are no good for this. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'll fix that in a second. Yeah, that was another problem with dragging them off the line like this. So I probably could have avoid avoided a little bit more of the uh, carbite stuff, but the yellow one, you know, intentionally went and harvested a lot of that, got back here and remembered that they don't get made into ingots. So basically... I'm for now manually processing a lot of this stuff, but hey, it's going to make us a lot of money, I think. We're already up to 10,000. So here's something else I didn't think about. The price with the blue kind of sucks. You get 200 for this one. When it's combined with green, you get 500, and when it's with red, you get 750. So um, yeah, if we were to make a filter system, we would actually take out a lot of these other ones. And I think that's going to be good for having a system set up to process all of the input because you would just refine them and sell them and then other ones that can make you more money you'd set it up to choose those ones instead, right? I think that kind of makes sense. Uh, no, don't make an ingot with the blue one. <laughs> oh. So there you go, we made a lean... I was about to say 40,000 actually, it's 37,000. Yeah, we started off with almost 6,000 actually and we've come away with 43,000. That is... Uh, worked out pretty well. We've learned something there that processing in the future is going to be good. I just don't want to do it automatically. And oh, look at that. There was a plum bite we could have made an ingot with. But oh well. Now I want to talk about... And uh, yes, I've just stared at this over here. I'll do that later. Let's talk about the next bit. So I've had an idea on how we can assemble a base around this area, sort of like we're doing already with these little turrets, except much better and much quicker as well because it takes a while to build these little frames like that and I've learnt my lesson by going into the R&D test chamber that is a great way to come up with things so I started to think about the turret and how it's placed onto the ground um, using this anchoring thing right here and what I've learned is that you can bring an anchored unit into the world but you have very little control over how it lands in the world so this was summoned from this tech right here if we go into the menu we've got our pre-designed tech somewhere around here and there it is, a Sumer test, only cost 2000 and as you can see, I just chucked a few things on it, it wasn't a proper design. Um, but this could be something that we could dump into our world. Now I want it to be anchored down so it stays in the exact same spot. Problem with that is, as I said, we can't really manipulate where it lands. Now what you might be able to do is drag some big blocks onto this thing, sort of create a shape, like you fill in the space, and then you can sort of force it into an area. 
uh, but then I realized that you're probably going to spend ages then placing blocks anyway, which is what we want to avoid. So we're going to go into the R&D chest chamber. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done, and then we're going to design a turret, and I'm going to show you how we bring them into the world without one of these anchors right here. So having just done a little bit of recording, I've actually found out that my idea is not going to work, and I'm quite upset, but I do want to show you the idea because it's still really cool and it might be useful for some of you as well so anyway over here we've got a block anchored to the ground we've got a couple of them if we attach other blocks to it these ones sort of extend down to the ground like this and they're anchored now if we do this on a vehicle like this with a cabinet and it's got wheels it doesn't extend down to the ground and become anchored so there isn't really a way to force it to be anchored to the ground which is the the problem and I thought the solution was do you know what? It doesn't actually have to be anchored to the ground. What we could do is bring in a little unit like this of all the things that we need. We've got batteries, we've got shields, an AI, and a cab. And if we just take off the wheels like this, um, then what we can do is leave it on the ground. When we fire, it pretty much stays in the same place. Now, how far that'll last for, I'm not sure. What if another vehicle rams into it? Or what if the firepower is so big it actually pushes it back? That might be a thing. Um, but here's the oversight. Here's the problem that I just discovered. If we go and attach one of these to it, um, then this thing isn't going to extend and it's not going to charge. It has to be anchored to the ground one way or another in order to work, which means this little idea gets thrown out the window, which is such a shame because I pictured us summoning in these little vehicles with wheels. We go and park them up and position them in the place that we want, and then we throw off the wheels and it's ready to go. Uh, but that is not going to work. So what we're going to go with, I think, is the rotating anchor blocks because they can rotate. It means whatever way the guns are facing, the AI will be able to rotate and face the enemy. So then we'll just plant these down sort of in and around the area and it might be a little bit unpredictable because otherwise we could have parked loads of these vehicles like in a row and it would have looked all nice and neat. And uh, my other thought here was that this doesn't just have to be for defensive turrets. We could build all types of different systems and have them like this. Now if they need this thing or an anchor block attached to it, it's kind of a no-no. You could then put them on anchored blocks, some sort of systems, but imagine being able to spawn in a, a little sorting system for items quickly or, you know, processing with delivery cannons or even a charging bay and then, you know, putting it in position, dragging off the wheels and then you've got the next part of your base. So that was my idea for a modular base and we're going to see how far we can go with it. For now, I'm going to design the rotating anchor that's going to defend it. So here it is. This thing looks pretty cool, right? I kind of went overboard with this one and I think we'll call this one, let's say, like the advanced turret or something like that because we got four batteries inside of here. There's two shields and a healing bubble as well and a charger. I don't think there's anything else on the inside to mention. As you can see though, a lot of blocks, a lot of firepower and I've even loaded it with loads of shielding as well. So this thing's almost ready to go but I am a little bit curious because Something a bit odd with this, as we move around here you can see it follows us, so the AI inside is following the player and that's fine, that's going to look weird when we have loads of those in our base I guess. Uh, but here's the problem that I encountered, when I try and drag a weapon onto it, it faces the opposite direction by default which I thought was kind of odd. Like We don't want it to face an enemy and start firing in the wrong direction which is what it might end up doing, but considering it seems to follow me I think it's going to be fine. So yeah, this is going to be like our advanced turret. Um, as we're going to be <laughs> probably making a, a lightweight version of this because I've kind of gone overboard here. So we're going to call it turret ADV for advanced. There we go. So let's go and put this into our world. 13,000 was the price and here's this thing in action. It's doing a little bit of a wiggle. And what are you going to do? You're going to follow me? It is. Can we tell it to do something? Harvest, idle or follow? If we set it to harvest, it's probably just going to again do its own thing. Let's put it on idle. <laughs> Hopefully that'll wake up when something comes along here which is what I want to try out now. So what's happened in between is I've been going out there and harvesting stuff. I've been specifically tar targeting the plumbia and some of the more expensive alloys that you can make and that's made a tremendous amount of money for us. Over 100,000 here so easily be able to afford one of those. However if we want to get more it's uh, <laughs> It's going to cost a lot, so I think we definitely need a slimmer design to go alongside it. Um, so what we want to do is fly over here and uh, attract the attention of something. By the way, I lost my harvester in between as well. Do you have weapons? You do. You are also... Um, this thing has no shields on it, I just realised as well. That makes me slightly uncomfortable, as I've lost my harvester today. Come on, that's it. Follow me back to the base. You're going to get annihilated. Yep, we can keep luring him over here. This is going to be cool. Let's see what it can do. 
Yep, it's still following me. Yes, it's turning around. Take care of business for us. Come on, shoot. Shoot. Let's set it to follow. There we go. Right, so idle is no good. And follow absolutely destroyed it. It came close. It got annihilated. Imagine a few of these in a row. That's really cool. I do like it. And um, we have kind of gone a bit overboard here. So placing it in works okay that time. Let's go and put another one, let's say, over here. And let's also summon in some blocks as well. Like I said, I was talking about doing that whole manipulation thing. Um, where are the big blocks? Okay, I doubt that's going to do too much. But what I'm hoping is we force it to come over to this direction. Let's chuck that out of the way as well. Let's buy our second advanced turret. And we'll have two of them next to each other. Oh, if only you could drive these around, then the placement of it would be perfect and these would just be awesome. Uh, but this is just the first of many modules. The next one I'm thinking of building is uh, a bay and we won't use like a, an anchoring block on that. What we'll do is we'll put it on wheels and you can drive the bay around like we have over there and plop it down to a different part in your base. Um, so this thing is taking a while. It can do that, especially when you buy the really expensive stuff. And there you go. It would appear we have been able to force it into a bit of a space. So what I'm going to do is remove these ones back here and then we can sort of extend our perimeter around here. What I might also do, let's see if we can buy an anchoring block here. Okay, there we go. So they sort of look like walls between the two. They, they actually really don't do too much. They do sort of highlight it a little bit. Um, so what I think I'm going to do next is try and get a third one, just squeeze it into this space right here, and I'm going to you know plop down a load of stuff in the way around here. Maybe we can use the harvester as well, just like park this. So it's in the way. We'll try and force it into that little gap. And uh, and then we can remove the previous setup that we had behind it. So this thing right here has a countdown, which I haven't really paid attention to before. I don't know if that's the same for every tech that you buy, but is it then going to appear? Oh, God, it's over there. <laughs> so I spawned in this buggy first, and it spawned in this little space. And I thought, there you go. That's going to be good enough. No. Now we've got this thing over here, and it's going to be a pain to dismantle. I'm not so sure I like this idea that much. It's definitely interesting. Maybe we shouldn't have gone for um, the rotating anchors. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of annoying that it's over there now. So that's 13,000 worth of stuff that's just, just sitting there, basically. <laughs> In the wrong position. I don't know. So I did a little redesign work on our tech over here. Not too much to talk about. Took out a battery, took out a couple of the uh, fuel canister things and sort of lightened it up, put the boosters on the side like this and now it's a little bit more manoeuvrable and in general this one was kind of disappointing because although it was big and beastly it's actually a bit of a pain to fight other techs with. Anyway enough about that, I'll always be redesigning stuff. So over here we have uh, a new bay and I found out the problem with it straight away is that you can bump into it and move it <laughs> which is no good. So you'll notice that it's got some wheels sort of attached to the sides here and look I'm struggling to actually turn into it. Um, this was one of those ones where I just wanted to be able to drive it into position, park it somewhere, and uh, then drop it down on the grounds, like we discussed doing with turrets and stuff. Yeah, the thing is, vehicles are going to drive into these, so it's especially bad for turrets because they're going to get knocked all over the place. So if we go and have a look at this thing right here and have a look in the text, you'll see we've got the, the large bay right here, and I thought that would be a really good way of expanding our base. You know, we drop down multiple of these in a chain, they link up to the battery, um, it's no good. You've got to build everything manually in this game. It is really starting to drive me nuts. <laughs> and uh, if we go over to this thing over here, you can see I've got a turret. This one was hand-built because I spawned it in using um, the new turret design that I've got in here. Let's go down and have a look at that. It is right here, small turret, and it spawned too far away from this wall. And that's another thing I thought we'd introduce to the base, is a basic wall behind the turrets that we're going to install. Um, so if we have a look again in this menu, you'll see that I made the wall kits down here. Um, where are they? So you've got wall kit 1, which gives you some anchor blocks and a bunch of uh, free wide ones, and then a larger kit as well. And this is something that I got from watching Zis do. What he did is created some packs of blocks that you could buy together. So if ever you want to assemble a basic tech, rather than going through the blocks menu and over and over again, it'd be a good idea to create little packs of, let's say, like wheels and batteries and guns that you can just... You know, buy in one go, and then uh, that makes life a little bit easier. So um, that's definitely a great tip right there. However, I'm reaching this point once again where I'm just going to have to put hours upon hours 
into building all of these turrets and do you know what even with it set up like this it's never really been an issue getting attacked and I'd love to have a really tidy base of loads of cool turrets everywhere it's just the way that you spawn them in and bring them into this game is uh, just just difficult basically I also had a load of items down here on the ground that have apparently despawned I was gonna sell them um, because at the moment oh yeah that's right you can't put those in there yeah, this stuff's just lying around and it's going to despawn, basically, so I was going to sell some of that, but we can make money nice and easy. So, um, so yeah, I've reached this point once again where we've investigated another idea to make base building fun and easy as opposed to, you know, really grindy, which is what it is by default. Um, and that seems to have not really, <laughs> you know, turned into anything. Now, if you've got hours upon hours to put into a game and you don't mind grinding for all of that stuff, you can get away with it in this game, but that's that's not me. I make a lot of videos and I don't have all the time in the world and it's become uh, quite difficult lately to to you know justify just playing this game for so long, especially when all we're doing is placing down blocks, doing stuff that you've seen time and time again. So I'm going to probably say this might be the last episode for a while because I've been in touch with the guys over at Terratech and some people have told me that they'll be able to um, edit my save game and unlock all the extra blocks for me and some other people have told me that they can't do that and I don't know what's going on but I'm in communication with them. If they'll be able to unlock um, the rest of these blocks for me with my save file then it means I can do so much more and I've spent hours upon hours searching around fighting techs and not getting any of these things at all. Now when we unlock you know the receiver or some other things it opens up all sorts of possibilities like these uh, fabricators down here and the filter conveyor that's the most important one that I want to unlock it gives us so many more things we can do in the game otherwise where we are right now I'm sort of like a, a sitting duck twiddling my thumbs we can go out, we can harvest resources, we can design new techs, but ultimately, you know, we've done that time and time again, so there's not much, too much more to it. And I'd like to do some flying vehicles as well. Once again, though, the blocks that I need to make the kind of flying vehicles I'd like to, they're all locked, um, and it's just, it's just a little bit frustrating at this mo moment, I guess. Um, so this might be the last episode of TerraTech for a while. I'm hoping they'll be able to help me out and unlock those items for me. If you don't see a TerraTech episode again, I don't know what's going on. You know, I want to keep you informed, but basically I've reached a sort of uh, end point for now until we get some new blocks, I guess. So who knows what the future of this series is. Hopefully they'll be in contact with me and it will be nothing. It will just be a little bit of hiccup, but there you go. That's going to be it from me this episode. I know it's shorter than usual, but I've just explained <laughs> exactly why. So I hope you've been enjoying these videos and I do apologize if, you know, you were hoping for more and they don't come. It's just like that with this game. It's an early access game. You know, it's still got a lot being put into it and there's a lot of flaws and issues with it. And so this kind of stuff can happen. Anyway, I better sign off because I'm rambling now. So as always, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.